Hello, everybody. In this episode, I'm going to be covering the native effects that belong on every single clip. Uh, in a previous episode, I covered uh, the effects that you can add to a clip, but this episode, I'm going to be covering uh, the native effects that belong to each clip. Right now, I've got my timeline open here, and I'm going to select a clip. When you select a clip and you go up to the effects controls, it's going to show any effects that you've added and also the clip's native effects. And what I mean by the clip's native effects, well, I'm going to arrow this down here just to kind of show you we are talking about all the motion effects, all the opacity effects, and time remapping. I'm going to be going over most of these here. Time remapping is kind of its own uh, episode. I'm going to be covering that in an episode, but in this episode, I'm going to be covering motion and opacity. But motion's got a whole lot of things here. If you arrow down motion, motion contains position, scale, rotation, anchor point, and they've got this anti-flicker filter. And opacity basically refers to the transparency or the lack of tra transparency of a clip. In some effects, you can make the clip transparent and you can see through it to a clip underneath it, and we're going to demonstrate that. For right now, let's cover position right here. I'm going to go through these features here, and then we're going to kind of show you a wireframe way of doing everything. But right now, let's talk about the numerical functions over here. And also, in uh, an upcoming episode, we're going to be talking about, I'm going to reserve another episode for these little items right here, these little stopwatches right here. This is for animation. And then you can also animate effects as well. You can animate the native effects and animate effects that you add to your clip. But this episode is going to be solely dedicated to just the basics here of uh, changing position, scale, rotation, anchor point, and so on. So position. Now you've got kind of some seemingly arbitrary numbers here. You've got 960 and 540. What this here is, this is its horizontal position, and this is its vertical position over here on the canvas, over here on the, the basically the program. And if you simply click and drag one of these things, you'll see it change. So I'm going to click and I'm going to hold down my click and I'm going to drag to the right and notice those numbers change right there. If I take it to the left, it's going to move it to the left. So this is basically a way to reposition your clip. Over here, you'll see this black area right there. This is still part of your part of your video image. If you export this clip out, you will have this block of black added here to your video clip. This kind of, what is this, brown, gray? I don't know. This area out here is basically the area that uh, is not your signal. This in here where you see black is going to be your signal. Also, this video signal over here, that's all your signal right there. So the way I move that, if I export this out, it will show exactly like this right here in this rectangular area right there. Now, this is your vertical position on the right. If I grab this here and I drag it to the right, notice it goes down. If I drag it to the left, it goes up. So we're changing our position of that clip right there. I'm going to reset this. I'm going to go, you'll see all these little teeny, or, or these little circular arrows here. These are all reset. If you hit the reset at the top of the motion, it resets all the effects. If you reset this, it just resets position. I'm going to hit reset. Let's talk about these numbers right here. 960 and 540. Once again, seemingly arbitrary numbers, but this 960 actually is basically the center point here for a resolution of basically double this resolution, which is 1920 by 1080. If you double these things, you got 1920 by 1080. Basically, it's center point position is like locked right here. That means that center point is 960 pixels over, which is dead center, half of 1920. And 540 is halfway up or halfway down. Double that, of course, is 1080. So that's its center point right there. Kind of the earlier days, Final Cut Pro had this at zero and zero. Final Cut 7 had that at zero and zero. And I kind of like that. That was a little bit more understandable. This, But just keep in mind that here, this 960 is half the resolution over for the center point and 540, uh, half the resolution down for the center point uh, vertically. The next one here, scale. Scale's pretty easy. You just basically click left click and drag it to the right and it scales up. It zooms up basically. And uh, right there is about 153, 53% uh, zoomed. If we drag this to the left, of course, it will zoom out. If we keep dragging all the way to zero, it disappears. It has zero scale now. I'm going to hit my little reset key right there. So that's kind of a quick way of scaling. And one thing you want to be careful with is if you are scaling, you got to be aware of what sort of resolution that you're using. If you're using something like 720 or 1920 by 1080, if you scale, usually they kind of recommend don't scale past like 110% on 1920 by 1080. You're going to st start really noticing the resolution loss. If we eventually zoom far enough, look at the resolution quality loss here. It's starting to look kind of crummy as we zoom up further. And that's 920%. That zoomed up quite a bit. So you're going to notice the quality loss the more you zoom. Right down here, what we've got is uniform scale. Uh, this first scale is your um, is your height scale, and the next one is your width scale. Right now, it's check marked, so it's doing both at the same time. As you scale one, it's scaling both height and width. If we uncheck that, 
Now we have uh, this kind of free reign with our width. We can size, we can scale our width or we can scale our height and we can stretch this out and make them look really freaky. So I'm gonna check the mark, mark that back. We're gonna clear both of those right there. The next one down is rotation. Now if I click on this and I drag to the right, Look, it rotates. That is about a full 180 degree right there. That's 180 degree, it's upside down. If I grab it and do it the other way, it'll go the opposite direction and go a negative 180 degrees. Now, one thing you can also do, I've been clicking and dragging all these items in here. Uh, if you do want to just, if you don't want to try, try to just drag it and get it and, and eyeball it and try to get it right where you want to, I'm going to undo that. Actually, let's reset right here. I'm going to reset. You can actually, say we want to rotate this thing 90 degrees. You can simply just click once. I'm not going to click and hold. I'm just going to click right there and it highlights this in blue. And now you can just type in 90. Hit enter and it rotates 90 degrees. If you want to do 180, enter, it rotates at 180 degrees. So you can, don't, you can just, you can click and drag these items here to change them, or you can also just single click in them. I'm gonna hit zero degrees, hit enter, and put it back to normal. All right, so let's go through anchor point right here. Now one thing, this is a little confusing here because what I've got is I've got a 4K clip here that's scaled down inside of a 1920 by 1080 timeline. So the actual position here is kind of different. Usually if you put the same resolution of clip inside of a timeline, uh, you'll have matching numbers on your position and your anchor point. So this is good to know here because your anchor point right here is 1920 by 1080. That means it's like this is reading the clip rather than the timeline. The position is reading the timeline line, the anchor is actually reading the clip. This is a UHD file, which is nearly 4K. It's a double 1920 by 1080, which is 3840 by 2160. That's considered UHD resolution, ultra HD resolution. So this is reading the clip. And like I said, this has been scaled down inside of my timeline to a 1920 by 1080 timeline. So this anchor point is in the dead center, which is 1920 uh, pixels in and 1080 pixels down on a 4K, on a nearly 4K clip. Now, what that basically means is that is dead center. And the way you can actually see that, well, right now, let's do a rotate. I'm gonna grab a rotate and rotate. What it's doing is this clip is rotating around this center point. It's like dead center in the middle, and this is rotating exactly in the middle here. If you change this anchor point, uh, one thing I'm going to introduce now before we really get an anti-flicker filter, and this is kind of easy anyway, so we're just gonna go up to my little motion, this little wireframe right next to the motion tab right here. If you click that, what that does is it brings up a wireframe that adds a functionality to basically Basically almost everything in this little pull down right here except for the anti-flicker filter. That means this wireframe will manipulate position, scale, rotation, and anchor point in a much quicker fashion than going over here and changing it numerically. It brings open a graphical version of this. And uh, we'll get into everything right now. We'll get into all those items beforehand here, but right now let's talk about anchor point. Right here in the center, you see an anchor point. If you hover your mouse over it, you see this little icon drop uh, pop up, which uh, basically shows that you're grabbing your anchor point. Okay, so I'm gonna go out, now that I've got this visual here, I'm gonna grab this anchor point, and I'm gonna start dragging it around here. Now, if we get this anchor point close to one of these points here, and we hold down the control key on a PC, and a command key on a Mac, watch what happens. I'm gonna hold down control, it will lock to the, as it gets close to these, it will snap to those points right there, to these nodes right there, there, there. And I'm gonna take it up in this corner and I hit here. Now watch what happens when I rotate. So I've got that locked in. Notice it is at zero, zero, which is this point up here. This is zero, zero. And then it starts counting pixels down and starts counting pixels across. And that's where you get these coordinates over here. So now I'm going to rotate and notice that it, the picture rotates around that anchor point. So this is like the pin point right here. It's like a pin has been stuck right there and it's rotating around that pin point right there. I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna grab that anchor point. I'm gonna drag it down here and hold down my control key and snap it to that point right there. And notice it is at the 3840 pixels over the UHD point all the way over and 2160 pixels down right there. And as you can see right here at that anchor point. So that's what those numbers basically mean. Now it's down in this corner, we rotate and it rotates around that corner right there. This will also work for scale here as we scale. I'm gonna grab the scale and drag it to the right. Notice it grows out this direction, going up to the upper left here. It grows out this direction using the anchor point. This anchor point, this little portion of the clip stays right down here and everything grows out to the left from there. In fact, if we change the size, you can kind of see this. Let's get bring this down. I'm gonna reach out, I'm gonna grab this and move it over. Watch what happens as we scale this. Notice it scales out from that point right there. And as we drag it over to the left, it scales into that point right there. 
Once again, we change this, hold down control, click right there, grab this, drag it out. Notice it scales uh, out this way. So I, I notice I reached out and I grabbed this and scaled it this way. Watch, watch this. I'm going to go reset the whole motion tab right here, get everything back to normal. And now we're going to start messing with the visuals over here. Once again, I clicked on this little wireframe next to the motion tab. It brings up this wireframe around my clip. And watch this. Now we got full control of all these functions right down here, position, scale, rotation, and anchor point, simply just by moving your mouse over. If we bring it up this left-hand corner here, it grabs that node and it drags. And notice now it is scaling with that anchor point right in the middle. So as we scale this down, we scale it up, we grab this and pull it to the to the left, it scales. These nodes here, if you just grab those and drag them out, they scale. For position, you just simply grab the whole clip. I'm going to not grab any of these nodes, just grab right here in the middle and move it. Notice how we can move that image right there. Grab it here, move it back down there, and it changes the position and updates the position coordinates over here. We showed you scale, let's show you rotation. If you move to the upper right hand or left hand or whatever, any one of these little corner nodes here, and you move your mouse just slightly out, that is a scale icon right there. As we take it further out, look what it brings up. It brings up a rotation icon here. If I click and drag, it will rotate. And that's basically how that works. And then of course you have control to the anchor point right here just by grabbing that. Once again, hold the control lock to a point. And there you go. Now you can scale based on that anchor point right there. So I'm going to hit reset here and reset everything back to normal. Take it back to normal. So you, so once again, you have the numerical version of position, scale, rotation, anchor point over here. And you also have the wireframe. If you click on this little icon right there, it brings up that wireframe. Anti-flicker filter. And the anti-flicker filter is kind of antiquated. This used to deal with when you were taking huge resolutions and putting them into a smaller timeline, you would get a bit of a flicker. And you could grab this and drag it over. If you're getting some footage that flickers, you can still use this. The highest you can grab it is to one and the lowest you can grab it took it down to is zero. So it's zero and basically and one so zero is off and one is fully on. So if you see a, if you have a clip that is flickering really badly, you can use the anti-flicker filter. I've hardly seen any footage as of late that uh, requires this anti-flicker filter, but it used to be a lot more required with the higher resolutions going in a smaller timeline. But they've dealt with that recently with um, with newer cameras and whatnot. So I'm going to put that on zero. So down here we've got opacity, and opacity is basically how transparent your video is. Right now it's completely opaque, which means you cannot see through it. If you grab this here, and I notice this here automatically has the toggle animation turned on here. Uh, so basically this is animating, it's, it's going to be adding a keyframe. So just keep aware that if you're going to use this opacity in here, it's probably a good thing if you're doing the opacity for the entire clip, you want to just turn that off. I don't know why they have that on default, they should have that off in my opinion. But uh, now if you turn that off, you can grab your 100% and you can grab this and drag it to the left. And notice if you drag it all the way to the left, this is becoming transparent and since there's nothing below it on the timeline which I'll show in a second here. If you get it to zero, it just basically goes blank and it looks black. I'm going to undo that. But I'm going to come down here. I'm going to grab this clip. I'm just going to drag it up and drag it over and put it on top of a track above this track. I'm going to put this, I'm going to put my playhead right there. And now I'm going to grab the, the opacity of that clip and drag it down. Look what happens as we drag it down. You're seeing through it. It's making it transparent. And you're seeing through it to the clip below it. As we drag it all the way down, you will see completely to the clip below it. So right now, this clip layer is on top. It's almost like an image that you put on top of this image right here. But as you turn down the opacity, you will eventually see that clip below it. Let's turn that back up to 100%. Hit enter. And also down here in your timeline, what you can notice here is you also have this line going across the clip. This is also a line that controls your opacity. It's kind of a quick little shortcut. By the way, if you can't see this at all, uh, your it might be because your timeline is too compressed. I hit shift minus to zoom this down. But uh, what you might have to do is hit shift plus to bring up your track height here. And now you have this opacity line. If I grab this, actually let's select that clip. You see it up here in the effect controls. As I grab this line and drag it down and let go, you'll notice it changes right there. It says over here, look at this. As we drag this up and down, right there around 56%. Notice it changes to 56.4% that we had down here. So this basically mirrors your opacity attributes up here. So you do have kind of a quick control right down here. If you don't see this, you might have to go up to your little wrench tool here and tell it to 
show video keyframes. As long as that's checkmarked, you will see this line right here. So we've got the video keyframes. And another thing that might be happening here is you, if you right click on this effects right here, you have to go down to opacity and tell and make sure that this is checkmarked. Usually this is done by default, but as you get start getting into other effects, you might want that timeline, you might want that little line to represent position, scale, uniform scale, all these other things right here. But right now this represents opacity. And the last little item that you see up here is blend mode under opacity. Blend mode is the way one clip will react with another clip that's below it or above it. Right now I'm going to turn this back to 100%. Depending on if you have a clip placed above another clip here, that blend mode is going to react differently. So if we're going to use the blend mode here, this basically determines how one video clip over the top of another one reacts to the clip below it. And if we select this clip here and we go blend mode here, we can change it to say so you have several different clips right here. Or you have several different choices to choose from here. I'm going to bring up an Adobe's website. If you go to Adobe's website, it'll show what each one of these do. Normal basically means it's just doing the normal thing. It's a full clip over the top of the other one covering the other one. As you move down, let's move down to like dark and it says each result, each result color channel value is lower, darker of the source color channel with a corresponding underlying color channel. This is get a little bit confusing, but uh, some of these will actually do things like key out the highlights, key out the dark portions, color dodge avoids like the colors and leaves in everything but, but the colors. And you just kind of have to experiment with some of these, but. To, Adobe does have this list of what these things do. Uh, if somebody shoots something in front of a dark screen, that's a screen overlay, takes out the darker, the portions of the image that's at absolute, that's at absolute black and leaves in everything else. So there's some different modes here for different effects. Uh, this really kind of helps when you start getting into kind of advanced compositing. As we click down and watch this, we hit darken. It'll take the darker portions of the clip below it and key those in and then leave the other portion of the image out. So you get a whole bunch of different effects just by messing with this. Multiply, just, and sometimes you kind of have to experiment and see what sort of effects you have. But some of these you really have to know what they're doing for very specific effects. But that's basically what the blend mode does is blends these two clips together when they're layered on top of each other and tells them how to react to each other. And like I said, if you once you get into advanced compositing, uh, that'll hopefully start making a little bit more sense. You can go to Adobe's website and look at those blend modes and see exactly what they do. So one other thing I kind of want to show just to finalize things here, let's kind of mess with this clip on top here and let's do like a picture in picture. I'm going to go, I've got this clip selected. So I see its attributes up here. It's native attributes. I'm going to arrow this down. I'm going to hit on the wireframe. I'm going to move to the bottom right hand corner of the wireframe and scale it down. I'm going to grab this one, move it up to right there. And now I'm going to grab this bottom one, select that, go and click on the wireframe, grab the corner wireframe, scale that down move it down here and put it right there. So now we got kind of a picture in picture sort of thing going on there. And one final thing here is copying and pasting attributes. Say I like the way this one is viewed here and I want to do that to two other clips. So I'm going to grab this clip here. I'm going to drag it and put it on top of this clip. Let's lengthen that out to kind of match the time here. Move my playhead over it here. Now say I like where this one's positioned. I'm going to select this top clip right there. I'm going to hit Control C on a PC, Command C on a Mac to copy it, and that just copied that clip. Now if I go down here, put my playhead right over this clip, and I right click on this clip, I can go up to Paste Attributes. If I paste attributes, it's going to say, what do you want to paste? I'm going to say, I'm going to paste all of my motion attributes that I just did and created to this clip right here. If I hit OK, it moves it up and puts it in the exact same position, the exact same scale. It just moved all those attributes to that clip. Now I can select this clip, Control C to copy, Command C, right click on this bottom clip, go up to paste the attributes, paste all the motion attributes, hit OK, and it moves it down there. And now I have kind of a mirrored effect here from what I have right here. I've also got that same thing going on down here. Now, if you want to get a clip back to, if you want to restore a clip back to the way it was before, you can either go into the video effects here and do it up here, or like we showed you, or you can right click on a clip and say, remove attributes. And I can tell it just remove everything. I'm just going to say it, well, if you didn't do time remapping or opacity, but you can just tell it to remove everything. And this clip just went back to the way it was before. So that's everything for this episode. If you have any questions, please post them and please watch all of my episodes. Watch every single one of them. Get a date, get some popcorn and sit down for like six hours on a weekend and make your date sit there and watch all my tutorials. Thank you.